<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I am going to show you how to create this moving, disembodied head. As if trapped in limbo and desperately trying to find a way out, this helpless soul moves frantically about in an eerily unpredictable way. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. Here are some of the items that you will need to create this prop. The key item in creating this prop is this battery-operated magic broom. I received one as a gift, and after seeing how it worked, I knew that I needed to make a Halloween prop out of it. It goes by different names and is available in several different styles and brands. Always look for one with bump and go movement and that is sound or touch activated. These animated brooms usually run about $30 and are available online both new and used. You may also find them seasonally at stores that carry Halloween items. You will also need a life-sized styrofoam head, a lightweight mask to fit over it, a variety of acrylic paints, flat black spray paint, some black material large enough to create a hood or scarf for the styrofoam head, something to create hair, such as part of a wig, some fake fur, or other hair-like materials a single six inch long piece of one half inch in diameter PVC pipe, a wooden dowel 12 inches long and three eighths inches in diameter, stick pins and safety pins, a piece of plywood with a minimum measurement of three feet by three feet, and enough soft foam to go around the perimeter of that piece of plywood. This air conditioner weather seal found in the weather stripping section of your hardware store is ideal. You can use foam pipe insulation or pool noodles. However, a softer foam will give you better results. Let's start this build by looking at the contents of the animated broom. You will not be needing any of the parts that make up the broom, but hang on to them. Who knows, maybe I'll come up with an animated witch's broom prop. So that leaves just the battery operated moving base. After installing the necessary batteries, fully test it to make sure that it operates correctly. Next, the moving base needs to be slightly modified. Some models are already black in color. If yours is not, it needs to be painted. Before painting it, protect the sound and touch sensors located on the top of the base by temporarily placing a piece of painter's tape over them then paint it with a flat black spray paint made for plastic. Some of the models also come with an on-off switch for the sound. If yours does not, and like me, you do not want the sound, you have two options. Your first option is to place a piece of self-adhesive felt or foam over the speaker located on the top of the base. However, this will only deaden the sound. To eliminate the sound altogether, carefully open the back of the base by removing the screws. And after locating the speaker, carefully cut one of the speaker wires. Next, take the six inch long piece of PVC pipe and check that it fits into the hole on the top center of the moving base. It should fit perfectly with very little play in it. If it is too loose, Wrap some tape around one end until it fits snugly when placed into the hole. After painting it black, place it back into position on the base. Next, take the wooden dowel and sharpen one end. This will make it easier to insert into the bottom of the styrofoam head. The other end can also be sharpened or slip a large tapered plastic cap, like from a tube of caulking, on that end. The purpose of this end's point is that it allows the finished head to move and pivot more easily by being on point. With the moving base now modified, let's turn our attention to the styrofoam head. 
If yours has a flared base, all parts of that flare need to be cut off and removed. The end result is a more cylindrical neck at its base. Then, carefully insert the sharpened end of the wooden dowel into the bottom of the styrofoam head. Looking from the side, insert it so that more of the styrofoam head is in front of the dowel and that the head is just slightly looking down. From the front or back view, the dowel must be inserted straight up and down and center. Place your mask over the styrofoam head and secure with tape, glue, or stick pins. To hide where the two come together, add some faux hair to the hairline, or when it comes time to add the hood, use it to hide the seam. You also have the option to use the styrofoam head as is, without a mask. Either way, add or accentuate facial features by using craft paints. You can also use black light paints, depending on how you choose to light this prop. Once the paint is dry, place your piece of black material over the head like a headscarf or hood. I created a hood by cutting a semicircle roughly 3 feet by 2 feet out of a piece of black burlap. Fold back about 1 inch of the material along the straight edge of the semicircle. This is the front edge of the hood. Once positioned, it can be easily held in place with stick pins and safety pins. Hide those from view by painting them black. Next, place the head's dowel into the PVC pipe. Adjust it so that the head's neck is just an inch or so above the upper edge of the PVC pipe. Also, make sure that the black material hangs slightly above the moving base. If not, adjust or remove some of the black material. Once done, the head should freely spin in all directions. Whatever type of look you create for your styrofoam head, it is important to keep it lightweight. Since the moving base is not very heavy, it can easily tip over, especially during abrupt stops and quick turns. To avoid this from happening, don't build a head that stands too tall, and keep the finished head balanced and lightweight. Now, let's turn our attention to the plywood platform. You can make the platform any size or configuration that works for you and your space. Keep in mind that to give the head enough room to move effectively, I would not make it any smaller than 3 feet by 3 feet. Also, use a piece of plywood that is smooth so that the moving base can travel across it easily. Fill in any large divots, voids, or knot holes and sand down any blistered or uneven areas. Then finish the surface by painting it. The soft foam, which creates a less abrupt stop for the moving base, will be glued around the perimeter of the plywood platform. But first, the lengths of foam should be cut so that their height reaches the center of the base's width or higher. In my case, the foam needs to be between one and a half to three inches tall. I used a glue gun to glue the foam around the base's perimeter. Placing the hot glue directly onto the foam can cause it to melt on contact. To avoid this, work in sections applying the glue to the base first and then place the foam onto the glue. If you find that your moving base has a tendency to get caught in a corner, you can remedy that by gluing an additional piece of foam in that corner at a 45. By using additional strips of plywood, you can create small platforms for props to sit on. To keep those from interfering with the head's movement, the vertical front piece of plywood should be tall enough to elevate the top piece of plywood to where the moving base can easily slide under it. When built correctly, these platforms will allow you to place some additional props on the front and sides of the platform without interfering with the movement of the moving head. The moving base will automatically stop after a certain running time has elapsed. To activate the base to move again, place a speaker nearby with looped sound effects, such as thunder. This will continually activate the sound sensor, keeping the base moving. This prop works best when viewed from eye level or looking up at it. 
so be sure to paint any of the visible foam or platform parts flat black. When creating the setting for your moving disembodied head to operate in, remember, keep it mysterious. As it darts from place to place, it should come and go from view, keeping your audience guessing as to what they just saw. Thanks for watching. Have a fun, safe, and happy Halloween.